Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, creativity, and life in a northern town. Feel free to leave comments on the show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com and let's keep the conversation going online. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. Welcome. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about quilting and creativity. A little bit around the house, we've been on staycation. We are in the middle of a week-long staycation. Uh, we took this time off, um, well, partially because of Highland Games. Um, usually there was one on the weekend before and after the vacation, but this year we just are doing the local Highland Games this upcoming weekend. So it'll be a lot of fun seeing people in my hometown have dinner, chitty chat, catch up, see who's um, having a great summer and who's doing well in their season as well as personal lives. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, we just see a lot of Highland Game people in the summer, but it's kind of like when your kids are in a sport and you get to know those people who attend and their families. So, so I'm looking forward to that. But what have we done? Well, last weekend was all about cars. On um, Saturday, I heard it was an 80s themed racing down at Berlin Raceway. 80s theme, man, we're there. We listened to the band and listened to all kinds of 1980s themed music. They were really good. And I have to say, uh, I like car racing in person. This is definitely um, higher level than what we have up north, and we really enjoyed it. It was a paved track. Michigan International Speedway had old stands that were there, so the grandstands were beautiful. Um, my son knew somebody who was on the pit crew, so it was kind of nice. He actually knew um, one of the racers, so the guys went and met with them afterwards. But my favorite from that night were the little sprint cars. It's a lot of power, and those cars went fast, very, very fast. And then on Sunday, um, we have a really big car show in Flint, Michigan, called Back to the Bricks, because downtown Flint has... Um, and antique streets made from brick. And their car show is there annually. To promote the show, they had um, cars that are drivable make a trip from Flint to my hometown to several places up to the Mackinac Bridge and back in promoting their August car show. The beauty of this is it was free to attend. And since in our town, it was on Saturday, which was the day of the car races. We drove to the next town over about 45 miles, which is right on Lake Michigan. It was a beautiful day, perfect temperature, sun was shining. I got some great pictures of the car so cars, some of them even with the um, Lake Michigan in the background. Really, really cool. There were a lot of antique cars, vintage cars, even some modern collectibles. And of course, you know, rat rods and all kinds of fun things. So we were dreaming about, you know, if we had money when we retire of buying a car. My husband one time was thinking about Harley Davidson. I said, hey, why don't we buy a Mustang or some other collectible car? Now he fell in love with the um, Rancheros and El Caminos, which are those um, car slash pickups from the 60s and 70s. He's always liked those. And if we can't afford the Mustang that we want, then we'll go ahead and get the <laughs> El Camino. And it may be something he can tinker with it. You know, he's also been thinking of um, getting some blacksmithing stuff. So I don't know. He may have to pick one for another because I don't know if we got enough room in a garage for both. The next thing is um, gardening. I'm pretty much done. Uh, I told you when June got here, I would clean up the yard, do gardening, and then by 4th of July, I'd be finished. Yep, that's where we're at. I've got all the fairy houses set up. Weeding is done. We threw mulch down in the front of the house for our Operation Curb Appeal. After we tore out the overgrown garden, we've planted yuccas. And this week I also planted sedum. It goes yucca, sedum, yucca, sedum. We have some really great rocks that um, 
my dad collected over the years from local farms because he did landscaping and maintenance for a while there. Um, so that's going to have to grow and fill in a lot of chainsaw action today with um, taming the jungle, I call it, the woods. Um, even though we live in town, it's got a, a woodland type of feel. So on my vacation, though, I haven't got as much quilting done as I want, but I did finish my little cherry wood quilt that's a mini three and a half inch squares with three and a half inch paper piece stars. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get that star pattern as a thank you for free. I did get it all quilted and I'm down to two quilts that I'm going to finish. Two quilt tops, I'm not going to. They're going um, maybe to somebody who can use them for charity. Um, just I just don't love them. And there's just a long story on, you know, why a one in was my mom's and she didn't like it and gave it to me for to practice on. And I just not going to have the time to do that. And the other one was one that was kind of a group project and yeah, it's just not my style. That's really what the bottom line is. Um, what else? So I've got a couple of quilt tops for charity that I do love that we'll be working on. Also, so I feel like I'm catching up and things are going well. I've also spent a lot of time creating this week using the Cricut Air Express 2. I'm test driving one from a friend to see if I like it. I do. I've made a lot of vinyl stickers. And if you um, stay tuned, um, I really have a lot of them probably next week. I've been photographing them. I even did um, one that's called quilt on and be creative a sticker which says one stitch one block one row at a time had a lot of fun making them I even uh, played around and made a little little plaque with a house number and a mushroom and just really enjoy their work so hey the cricket thing is really cool and it would be worth it if you had a little extra cash to spend on crafts it, it's a kind of one of those things it's a little bit of investment in the product or the the machine but the rest of it is seems to be pretty affordable i have done a little piecing um pat sloan has a new free block that's part of her won't you be my neighbor um series but i'm not doing the whole block of the month on that i really like this current one which is houses they're kind of offset and you could fussy cut a really cute piece of fabric for the center square with the flying goose I guess you call it rooftop flying geese rooftop and this is just adorable and it's a larger sized block and I think I'm going to make as many as my shibori fabric will make and I have about two of the little house components done one block has six little homes in it so it's really really cute and you know don't have anything knitting going on I kind of stalled out on a granny square project from last year that's still in the works and just really been thinking about what I want to do over the summer and I decided that you know doing more crafty things and keeping my idea of keeping it simple and simplicity keeping the garden simple simplicity keeping my cooking and house cleaning and all that relatively simple and trying not to over complicate it so I can capture that fantastic feeling from the summers of my childhood of it just being simple and free. And I remember I'm also using a word called present, being present is my other word for the whole year. And I've been focusing on that quite well. And I feel like um, I'm able to do that. So this week I've been thinking a lot about what is your superpower? I've kind of seen that going around the internet quite a bit. And I thought, well, what is my superpower? Everybody's supposed to be able to have one. And I think mine isn't just quilting. It's being creative and doing all kinds of things. But especially, oh, I spend a lot of time in my current life quilting and long arming and I guess that's part of my superpower 
I remember the first project I created on my own. I worked really hard on it. Um, I was so proud of my effort. You know, I was probably nine or 10 years old. It was the mid 1970s. So you have to remember this was before the dawn of the internet or even cable television in my little universe. Uh, We played outside. We watched terrible TV shows like the Brady Bunch. And we spent our entire summers trying to not be bored. I think it's ironic. I spent a lot of time playing school with my brother and sister. Of course, I was the teacher. Worse yet, I, you know, the biggest thing I tried to do was um, not be grounded because that usually meant I was bored and getting into mischief. You know, prior to this age, my mom especially encouraged coloring and doing puzzles and making things out of kits. You know, things like those um, little hand looms where you wove pot holders from loops. Yeah, the project I'm talking about that I was so proud of is different. It was something that I had to follow a pattern. It was labor intensive. It was mid-70s, so I was probably nine-ish, maybe ten. This thing was made out of construction paper. It was an angel band that was made for Christmas decorations. I made it during the summer because I was trying really hard to find things to keep myself out of trouble. And I had an abundance of energy that had to be channeled into something positive. You know, you've heard me talk before that I am the ADHD poster child and now poster child adult, I guess you could say poster adult. I found a book on making decorations and one of the million trips that we took to the library. And I found the section in our really old library building that had a lot of really old and moldy and dusty books. In the new section, um, they would get a lot of kids and youth books. But I found where they had craft books. A new day had dawned. I found something that I loved to do, and it was making things. I checked this book out over and over and over again. I hand traced the pattern templates out. I spent hours making this little angel band, and each angel was made out of paper, pipe cleaners, hand drawing on the faces, and they had instruments. There was a little trumpet and cymbals. One had a harp and a guitar. It made me very happy with the hours I spent doing this when I was finished. And it made other people happy too. I remember that we, we set it out every year. The band lasted for quite a while, but it was made out of paper. It also had toothpicks for decoration on the outside of the angel's Robes and pipe cleaners were their hands, and the lifespan of this was short. You know, this all started with taking a child on a trip to the library for a summer reading program. I was encouraged by my mom and dad, but mostly during this time, my mother, to stretch my creative muscles. I call this one of those life lessons or truths that we need to remember. So after making this angel band... I made a plethora of things and my sister and I were playing around with sewing and making doll clothes from patterns. We had a sewing machine we picked up at a yard sale. I actually wanted to learn how to make my own clothes and I did take uh, 4-H after school to learn how to sew and do macrame. Um, Sewing though, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would enjoy making clothes. I just, um, sewing could be very frustrating for me. However, it was a skill that I had in my creative toolbox. It was a rough skill from childhood, but it was there. Rough skill. Remember this little truth. I spent many years studying how to play the violin and classical music, starting around this age also. And that was the time, you know, where it was really, really exploring creativity as a little kid. And then when the time came for school, sixth grade, for band to start, I started out on flute, but, you know, being um, a little asthmatic and a lot of uh, allergy problems, I really had a hard time. And I saw an unused string bass in the band room. We didn't have a tuba, and I thought we sounded horrible because there was no bass. Side note, um, my father is a music nut, and he had great stereo systems, a hi-fi stereo. 
and we made sure we had all kinds of music. He made sure we listened to classical, classical guitar, um, jazz, even country music. So my dad really encouraged creativity too. He also did a lot of drawing and my sister spent way, we all drew a lot, but my sister had a lot of the drawing talent. You know, when I think about it, why did a school have a bass laying around? No one was using it. Maybe it was for the jazz band. I, I digress. Let's get back to the um, little lesson here is that I learned to play the bass because it had to be similar to the violin, right? Yeah, I started violin lessons and thought it's just a big violin. And I asked the band director, he said, sure, you can learn how to play the bass, but I had to learn it on my own because the band director didn't know how to play it. Um, so I found books and they told me what I needed to know. Remember, still the 1970s and YouTube hadn't been invented yet. I didn't know any better. No one told me that I couldn't do this. No one said it couldn't be done. In fact, all those around me encouraged me in this idea. When I think back on it now, it was an crazy, impulsive, childlike idea. But no one told me it couldn't be done. And I didn't think so either. Remember that little truth too. Because these lessons have carried me far in life. About 12 years old, I realized I could teach myself how to do things no one around me knew how to do. And just as an aside, my senior year, I made the state honors orchestra. Before that, in my junior year, I had about six lessons from a renowned bass teacher that only came up north to a special music camp. And he told me something that I want you to remember this truth too. He said, Vicki, you already know how to play. You just keep practicing. So this started me on this lifelong journey of creating and making things and eventually landing in quilting, where I spend a lot of my time you know, I heard a nice phrase on a podcast out there that describes me perfectly, and it's called multi -craftual. I think it was on um, the uh, Crafty Planners podcast, but I cannot remember the guest. I wish I could, but it was a great thing, multi -craftual. Everything I'm talking about is based on these experiences that have shaped me and my creativity. So something I really believe is that we're all capable of being creative. So remember that. Remember this truth. We're all capable of it. Sometimes we lose this superpower on the way to being um, adulting our way through life. And um, we forget about that simple exuberance that we had when we were younger, like the angel band. I really believe we're all capable. It's just something in our human DNA, creativity is this, this experience. People have been creating and showing art and sharing and singing songs and drawing and painting and dancing and plays since humans have been around. I truly believe that. Creativity is something that we need to exercise and nurture it, just like any skill. And sometimes, you know, it can take years, like the violin, it can take years. And I still get frustrated. An example today, I haven't played it in a while. Started to remember when I was a kid and for about 30 years of my life, I really spent most of my creative time practicing violin and bass. So I got it out today because I was thinking about this podcast for, you know, about a week I've been practicing it and not everything is all um, success you know that's why we have to practice and in fact the bridge shot out the strings collapsed I got frustrated however um, my knight in shining armor came through he my husband he fixed the bridge and set the strings and I tuned it up and it's good to go again um, so just know that you can use creativity to help you cope with life, express things in ways that without words or emotion. In many art forms, we can even communicate all kinds of ideas to other people. Sometimes we use it to cope. Sometimes we give these as gifts. And sometimes we may even become good enough where we can actually 
do things for other people for hire, but that's not really my primary motivation. It's really about expression and coping with day-to-day life. So remember that our superpower is really being creative. That's what this truth are to me about creativity. We have to encourage it. We have to try all kinds of things throughout our life and our skill set. We have to do something that seems really impossible, but we also have to keep on practicing. So I want to thank everyone for listening today. And I want to welcome any new listeners and say, I hope you had a time of being inspired to go and create something. And to, if you're a quilter and a, and a creative, take time every day. I encourage people to leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Please share. We would love to have this community grow and continue the conversation online. Show notes are on my website at My Creative Corner 3. And please leave ideas on how you practice every day and how you weave creativity in. And I am looking forward to spending the rest of my staycation doing a little bit more traveling, being inspired by beautiful places close to home, meeting new friends, trying new things. And I'm going to get going on that shibori little won't you be my neighbor block. It's so adorable. I'll link all that in the show notes. If you would like to sign up for my newsletter, you can see a link at the top of my blog. And as always, quilt on everyone.